bring your favorite baked goods to share. For any questions or more, more details, feel free to contact Dean Cheryl Thompson or Sister Deborah Thomas. We look, we look forward to seeing you there for a time of fellowship, creativity, and fun. If, if, if any ministry would like to make a presentation to the pastor during pastor installation service, please let any vegan know after morning service today. Trustees will be meeting after morning worship. Monday, November the 8th, deacons meeting at 6 p.m., followed by joint leadership meeting at 7. Bible study is this Wednesday, November the 13th, at 7 o'clock via Zoom. Let's continue to pray for our sick and shut-in and each other. And I just want to reiterate next Sunday, Sunday school will start at 10 15, morning worship at 11. This concludes our announcements received for this morning. Thank you for your attention. Church. Good morning. It's offering time. Yeah. So today is the last day to collect for the Thanksgiving baskets. I want to thank everybody who's uh, participated thus far. If you want to give uh, today before service is over, please see one of the deacons, myself. Um, are we doing a meeting? Matter of fact, I'll stand up front doing the meet and greet to make it easier for everybody. Um, and also, happy Valentine's Day to my brothers, the Omex South Park Attorney. Yeah. <laughs> and I guess congratulations to Virginia. Yeah.
Now we're going to have uh, a little meet and greet for just, let's say, two to three minutes. So let's all stand and greet those that we haven't seen for the week. Let them know you love them. Let them know you're still praying for them. Amen? Amen. 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 Come on, let's go.
us over the edge. I just want to iterate a few things. Thank you all for your giving, for the Thanksgiving turkey, like my brother Aaron said. We wanted to get to 75, y'all. Y'all, y'all disappointed me this year. We got to 79,
So long as we say Jesus. Jesus, something happens on the show. Come on, how many got that testimony this morning? Late in the midnight hour, we called. When you couldn't call nobody else, we called him. And he came through. He might not got there when he wanted him to, but he was there right on time. Something happens when I call the name of Jesus. The Bible says that at the mention of his name, every knee should bow. Every tongue will confess that he is Lord. That means ruler. That means king. That means the great I am to the glory of God the Father. So here's the good news this morning, church. Whatever it is you're dealing with in your life, if it's got a name, it has a need. That's what the Bible declares. That everything with a name has a need. And at the mention of his name, it has to bow. So if your sickness has a name, your sickness has a need. If anxiety has a name, anxiety, depression has a name, it has a need. Whatever it is you're dealing with, if it's got a name, it's got a need. And at the mention of his name, it's got to bow. So say his name one more time. Somebody just shout Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, give God praise one more time. In your building. Hallelujah. chapter of the book of John, and we're going to begin from the 31st verse. Hallelujah. Something happens when I call. Can we clap our hands for this choir? Hallelujah. God bless your heart. Thank you, guys. Singing the song of Zion. Amen. If you still look and say, hold up. All right, all right. Something happens when I call you. Amen. Hallelujah. Happy birthday to all of November, but November D. <laughs> I'm telling you, November we're looking all right. Happy birthday to all of November babies. That's, that is awesome. Praise God. Hallelujah. John, the 8th chapter, the 31st verse. Hallelujah. It reads thusly. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Somebody say, if you hold. Yeah. Say it like you mean it, if you hold. Yeah. If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth. So then the truth comes with holding to my teaching. You will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, we are Abraham's descendants, and we have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? Jesus replied, very truly, verily, verily, I say unto you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it together. So he whom the son has set free is free indeed. Hallelujah. Somebody say free indeed. Free indeed. By the grace of God and the mercy of God, uh, momentarily this morning, I would like to speak to you from a subject entitled Life After Death. Life After Death. Uh, let's pray. Spirit of the God, fall fresh on us in this place. The flower may fade to the grass, it does what the word of the Lord, it stands forever. God, we pray that you would stand resolute down on the city of our souls. Till crooked places are made straight, until shattered places are mended, until the glory of the living God is revealed. And I will walk with you, and I will talk with you, and our relationship with you, Father. We came to this place on this morning, this time set aside to experience you. We pray, God, that you would grant us the grace to do just that. Have your way. Touch, heal, set free, restore, renew. Revive us again. Do what only you can do. And we will be careful to give your name on all glory, all honor, and all praise. In the name of Jesus the Christ. And we pray this to God, the Father, through the power and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. And we thank you in advance. If you believe it, shall amen. amen. On the way to your seat, do me a favor, tell your neighbor life after death. Life after death, life after death, life after death, amen. Hallelujah. So the word of God tells us that if we are living, breathing, and not yet in a relationship.
relationship with Christ that we ought to walk in dead. Uh, that we think we are alive, but we have not yet experienced life in its totality if we do not experience it with him. Uh, the word of the Lord says it like this, in him was life, and the life was the light of all men. The light shined in darkness, and the darkness could not comprehend it. You may have thought your life was okay, but when you got to know Jesus, it got a little bit better. You might have thought your role was kind of uh, doing all right, but, 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 but when you got in relationship with him, things got a little bit easier, or, or his guidance and his direction and his presence in your life made everything sweet. And the old church would say, he's sweet as the days go by. And the old church in here, remember that, he's sweet as the days go by. Uh, so, so here it is, uh, the Bible says, and this is Jesus talking uh, to his followers. He said, if you hold to my teaching, you are really, somebody say, really? Come on, sound like you mean it, really? Really, my disciples, it made me scratch my head, uh, 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 D.D. Greg, because I was looking for some other stuff, because, you know, sometimes in church we think about some other stuff, meaning you're really his disciples, you know. If, if you know how to greet the saints when they say, God bless you, then you must really be saved, you know. God bless you, I'm blessed and highly favored. I'm walking in the midst, you're blessed to be strength, then you must really know Jesus. If you can say stuff like, I'm Holy Ghost sealed and I'm fire baptized, then you must really know Jesus. If you're a tither, you must really know Jesus, right? Uh, if you come to church on Sundays, who, who, you know, no matter what you do, on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, you must really know Jesus. But Jesus says, if you keep my word, Somebody say, keep the word. Keep the word. We're going to talk about this a whole, whole lot uh, in, in church like we used to. You, you know, when I was growing up, we talked about holiness every Sunday. We talked about living right every Sunday. Uh, we talked about walking like Jesus every Sunday. Uh, but now, uh, people don't tend to talk about that as much. But Jesus said, the way folks really don't know that you belong to me is if you adhere to my word. That means you got to look like me. That means you got to sound like me. That means you got to be willing to forgive like me. That means you have to be willing to love like me. That means you have to be willing to display compassion like me. That you can't look down on somebody's circumstance and situation and go whispering about them in the shadows instead of doing what you're supposed to do to pick them up while they were down because somebody picked you up while you were down. Y'all would help me in here. You didn't pick yourself up. You didn't wash yourself off. You didn't get yourself together. You ain't sitting here by your grace. Had it not been for the grace of God, we all would have been swallowed up. Hallelujah. So I've got to keep his word, hold to his teachings. And he said, if you do that, then you'll know truth. Uh, you'll be aware of truth. You'll, you, you'll see the setup of the enemy coming from a long way. Uh, you won't get caught up in foolishness that wastes your time and your energy because you'll know truth. When you know truth, you don't go chasing every fight that come your way. Uh -huh. When you know truth, you're not sitting up all night talking about who did what to who and how they did it and what ought to happen because they did it. When you know truth, you know how to go in your prayer closet and instead of talking about folks on the phone, you pray for them in your secret prayer. I wish y'all would help me in there. When you know truth, you know how to say, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know it. Thou withdraw thyself from me. When you know truth, what the Lord is that the truth will make you. Somebody say, make you. You ain't got no choice when you know truth. Be the present when you know truth. It, it ain't a suggestion that you ought to be free. The Bible says, when you know the truth, it'll make you free. If you're tired of walking around with shackles on, some people got shackles folks can see, and some people got shackles folks can see. How do you know the difference? The difference is people talk about the shackles they can see. Yo, maybe y'all don't talk about it. Uh, people talk about shackles they can see. Uh, you, you see such and such? But they look at, I don't know how they, people talk about the shackles that they can see. But some of us have invisible. Mm. I was sitting this morning.
wanting that the invisible shackles are more dangerous than the ones people can see. See, the issue with the invisible shackles is over time we learn how to dress them up. Yeah, we learn how to dress up. Invisible shackles, we learn how to put something warm on top of invisible shackles. We know how to get that best fragrance we like and spray it over the top of invisible shackles. We, 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 we know how to guard people from being able to see the invisible shackles so that they won't ask us too many questions. So they won't try to dig too deep. Somebody say invisible shackles. But the Bible says when you know the truth, it'll make you. It'll make It'll make you free. So, so, so here it is. The word of the Lord didn't declare that the people looked upon him and they said, well, we're Abraham's seed. We're Abraham's seed. How is it uh, uh, that you're telling us we'd be free? We've never been slaves. Uh, but the Bible declares uh, that they were just that coming out of Egypt. That they were just that having been freed and released from their bondages and from their chain, that they were just that. Sometimes you've been shackled so long, you didn't even know you was chained up. You know there's a such thing as, as getting in a position where you've been stuck for so long, you're stuck and become part of your normal, and you stop looking for freedom, because you say stuff like, it is what it is, right? Uh, but I, I got news for you this morning, church. Uh, God didn't die and give his only son uh, so that you could live a life turned. It is what it is. Uh, that's not why he came. But the Bible says, I came so that you could have life and life more abundantly. Uh, if you translate it, it's to the full until it overflows. In other words, not it is what it is. Uh, God came and gave his life so you could have every single promise in the book that's attached to you. So that if he could say your favor, you'll look like your favor. So if he could say your blessed, you'll walk like your blessed. So if he sent you to heal, you'll talk like you're healed. So if he sent you to heaven, Multiply me, even in the midst of your pain, and even in the midst of your 
midst of your hurt and even in the midst of your discomfort. I want to pause here parenthetically to let you know that God doesn't just see you, but he's working behind the scenes to make you into what he's called for you to be. Ain't hey, nobody working like you work. I've been trying to get away from discomfort for a long time. God's trying to teach me, mate, if you just stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, I'll show you that I'll make your enemies your footstool. I'm trying to take you higher. You've been praying to go higher. The way you go higher is that you, thank you, sir. The way that you go higher is that you stand on the backs of the folks who talked about you. The folks who stand behind your man. The folks who stand in the back and in the front and side to side and thought you wouldn't make it. Somebody holler, I'm still here. You talk about me, but I'm still here. You tried to cancel me, but I'm still here. You looked at me funny and whispered when I came in the room, but I'm still here, and I'm kept by the power of God. If God kept you, if he lifted you up, if he put you in heavenly places, I want the God that you stand up on your feet and lift your voice and clap your hands and holler, I'm still here. That 
means, right? But when Caleb was talking in scripture, Caleb says, here's the land, let us go up and possess it, Brother Powell. He didn't say, let us go conquer the people who are there. To possess means that the price has already been paid for me to be able to have it. All I got to do is go pick it up. So he says, see, they said, go possess it. They walked in and saw what was there and said, we ain't good enough. What lie has your chains told you about you? I'm, I'm, I'm talking to you. I'm, I'm talking real, real stuff here. What lie has your chains suggested about you? That you couldn't be what God called you to be? That you couldn't do what he told you to do? That you couldn't have what he said was yours because you didn't think you were big enough, good enough. Listen, this is the dilemma that we face uh, because we've been stuck for so long and the narrative has suggested falsely to us for so long that we are less than, that there's such a thing as being free and still. who have accepted the Lord Jesus as their personal Savior and they're walking around in bondage. Mm. Yeah. Because it's difficult to fathom He makes all things new. It's, it, it goes against our human intellect. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. What do you mean, Pastor Nate? For real? And you're stuck trying to explain your yesterday when God's trying to usher you into a new day. That's right. So here's the thing. I'm almost done. I'm getting out of your way. Uh, the Bible says they turn around and they walk away from what belongs to them because they see themselves as less than. Can I say that one more time? Say it. It says they walked away. Can y'all imagine that? Mm. Somebody told you that all this is supposed to belong to you. And you look at it and say, no, that's too good for me. Mm. And turn and walk away. Mm. They walked away. Because they saw the Bible said, they said, we see ourselves as grasshoppers in their sight. And watch this. It says, and because we see ourselves that way, they see us. Is it possible? That the way you see yourself is informing others on how to see you too? Yes. Let me ask this question. What would happen if you walked in the boardroom of confidence? Come on. What would happen if you stepped into the business meeting acting like you knew that God had already put everything together for you? Uh, what would happen if you walked in the oil and the anointing and the favor that's over your life? What would happen if you spoke the word of God and expected it to work when it came out of your mouth? What would happen if we really believed everything God said about his children? So the Bible says they walked away and for 40 years they were in what I call an intentional incubator, the wilderness. We don't celebrate it, we don't get happy about it, we don't clap about it. The wilderness is difficult, the wilderness is hard, the wilderness is uncomfortable. The wilderness demands that we trust in something greater than ourselves. And for 40 years they were there. And this is the thing, body of Christ, I need you to understand. That during that time, God not only communicated to them who he was, but he reminded them of who they were. <laughs> See, uh, again, the Bible says, when we don't know Christ, we're dead in our sins. So when we gain life after death, it's imperative, believers, that we also go through the process of being reminded of who we are. Mm -hmm. Why is that important, Pastor Nate? Because you need to know things like greater is he that is within you. Yeah. 
while we're trying to build on your today. Yeah. Uh, they'll, they'll, they'll even remind you of everything they went through to get where they are in order to let you know it ain't going to happen quick for you. Uh, but the Bible tells me, behold, I do a new thing. Hast thou not known and hast thou not heard? I give God praise for your deliverance, but I got news for you, baby. Mine ain't got to look like yours. What God does for me don't have to resemble what he did for you. A God can restore some things in my life that you might not be able to have a hold of. God can renew some things in my life. A God can redeem some things in my life. God can resuscitate some things in my life. I'm just crazy enough to believe he's God in the midst of it all. And he declares. Some kind of way. The grace of God found me. Yeah. 
the mercy of God redeemed me. The love of God washed me up. And he made me not only to be saved, but to accomplish his will in the earth. There is life after death. Come on, clap your hands if you believe. It's a special hand power when you're out there. If you're here on today and you haven't accepted Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, there's no better time than right now. There's no better place than right here. I want to be, I want to be as clear as I can be this morning. God doesn't need you to get yourself together before you can say yes. God doesn't need you to knock every eye out of I'm coming just as soon as I finish this and stop that. No, 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 no. That don't even make no sense. If you could get yourself together, there would be no purpose for Jesus and his blood. He died to rescue us from us. Do you hear what I'm saying? And all he needs from you is yes. And when you say yes, he steps in and he helps you to correct what needs to be corrected. He, he steps in and, and while you're trying to give him an explanation of everything you did, he puts his arms around you and says, I don't need to hear all that. Welcome Thank home. You. Thank you. Welcome home. Thank you. So right now, with every head bowed and every eye closed, if that's you today, if you're here and you want to say yes to Jesus, I don't want you to wait on it. I don't want you to think about it. I don't want you to pump your brakes. If that's you, I want you to raise your hand right now. I want you to raise your hand right now. Because the tomorrow is not promised. And the next moment is not promised. And you don't know when you'll get this opportunity again. So don't wait to say yes to him. Say yes now. If you're here and you're looking for a place to call home, and God told you this is the place for you, I don't want you to wait on it. I don't want you to think about it. We want to welcome you home. If that's you, throw your hands up in the air right now. Hallelujah. God, I thank you. God, we bless you. God, we give you glory. Hallelujah. If you're watching online and you want to say yes to either of those appeals, I just want you to hashtag that's me, hashtag that's me right now. We want to walk alongside you into purpose and into destiny. Hallelujah. 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 There is freedom for what God has called you to do next. There is more. There is more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. Lift your hands all over the building. Everybody who can, lift your hands. God, I thank you right now for this body of believers. I give you glory, Father. I give you glory for your presence in their lives. I give you praise, God, for your hand over their life. And I thank you now, God, that even as they stand in their freedom, that you open up a new aspect of that journey to them in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you right now that you're opening up vision. I thank you right now, God, that you're opening up innovation and creativity in the kingdom. I thank you right now, God, that you're articulating purpose and destiny to these, your people. I thank you right now, God, that you are reinserting a boldness that says, even if it looks bigger than me, nothing is greater than my God. God, I thank you for more. Help us to do more. For your glory, help us to be more. For your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, clap your hands. Come on, clap your hands. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody say, I give myself to 
And in this case, I want to have something to say. I don't know what I can say except praise the Lord. Yeah. Uh, people gave and they gave freely. And the people in um, Asheville were very thankful. Uh, I have to have just a slight connection uh, with the uh, people who were at the church. That's how I got in touch with them. Because at first we only saw people of another color. And we started to find somebody who looked like us Amen. who needed God. And said, so to God be the glory for yeah. all that you've done. In his name. We sent out letters, and thank you for our fact that we sent letters out. We did receive wonderful donations from Mount Carmel Baptist Church, from the Sun, um, St. John. John. John Baptist Church in North Carolina, uh, Mount Olive Baptist Church, and Mount Onan Baptist Church. And we also had individuals that made great donations to us. So we took the trail up, and we want to especially thank Avery here who hooked it up to that too, just to took it down there like a <laughs> yeah, I Okay, good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. The, the struggle is real. And it's not just real in Asheville, it's real in multiple other places, but we decided to bless Asheville because of Sister Heath's connection. What you're looking at are our people unloading the trailer top left. You're looking at the location that we delivered the stuff to inside of the church. This particular church was located kind of up the hill, so it didn't get flooded out. But if you look at the lower picture where you see the water rushing across the highway, that's real. The deacon that's sitting in the trailer with his hat on lives up the hill from a mobile home park and everybody in that mobile home park, he said, was up to his house trying to get dry. So when JBC and surrounding units decided to donate, you blessed a lot of people. And to God be the glory for the efforts in doing so. This is real. And let's continue to do what we've been doing. Let's not stop now. We will go to Greenville, South Carolina, and help build back a house this week that a tree fell on top of. And the work just continues. If I were a millionaire, I would do a lot of things with money. But since God didn't bless me with so much money, I'm trying to do it with my physical body while I have a chance. And I thank y'all for supporting us as we move forward in these directions. Because when we go, and that emblem on the side of that trailer says Jerusalem Baptist Church, that's who we represent. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Now, I have a special surprise. There's going to be some food over in the North Sanctuary. For Sister Dorothy's birthday celebration, and everybody's invited. <laughs> now let's continue this week to do the things that's right and pleasing in the sight of God. And we thank you so much for going in your pocket, you know, because it's what you do for others is what's really going to matter in the end. That's right. And I thank you. Let us stand and be dismissed. And in the process of this being dismissed, you all, we're praying for the food that we will entertain next door as well, okay? Let us pray. God, we thank you one more time. First of all, God, you have blessed us with a man who preaches the word in season as well as out of season. God, we thank you for that. We thank you for that. We thank you for our congregation, those who travel far and near, those who continue to come out and support Jerusalem Baptist Church. God, we thank you for your grace and your mercy and your decision to let it shine on us. Bless the food that we're about to receive. Bless the fellowship, Father God, and bless each of us as we go our way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.